Hello my dear students, second prep students. Today we are going to continue the novel Pride and Prejudice, chapter 6. The title of the chapter is Elizabeth Visits Mr. and Mrs. Collins. From the title we get to know that Elizabeth is going, was going to visit the Collins after their marriage. Mr. and Mrs. Gardiner came to spend the Christmas at Longbourn. Who can remind me who the Gardiners were? The Gardiners were the brother and the sister-in-law of Mrs. Bennet. Mr. Gardiner was a sensible, gentleman-like man. The Netherfield ladies would have had difficulty in believing that this person was a trader whose job was buying and selling. And that was all because of his being well-mannered and agreeable. Mrs. Gardiner, she was several years younger than Mrs. Bennet and Mrs. Phillips. She was a pleasant, intelligent and elegant woman. She was also interested in fashion. And that's why she was a favorite to the long-born nieces, to her long-born nieces, especially the two eldest, Jane and Elizabeth. They often stayed with her in London. Mrs. Bennet started complaining because none of her daughters was engaged. She expected Jane to be engaged to Bingley and Elizabeth to be engaged to Collins, but this unfortunately didn't happen, so she started complaining. Elizabeth believed that Darcy was the main reason of the separation between Bingley and Jane. Jane was still disappointed and she was rather depressed. So Mrs. Gardiner decided to take her with them to London, which was a very good suggestion. Elizabeth was extremely grateful to, grateful to her aunt for this kind suggestion and she believed that Jane would gladly agree. Mrs. Gardiner thought that she would not be influenced by the hope of seeing Bingley in London. Elizabeth believed that it was quite impossible and she thought that Darcy would not allow, allow him to go and visit the Gardiners. Because as we said before, he felt that they were inferior to him. So the gardeners stayed at Longbourn with the Bennets for a week and then they left and they took Jane with them. Mrs. Gardiner, before she left, she warned Elizabeth of Wickham. She told her that he was not suitable for her because she believed that Elizabeth admired him. Elizabeth truly admired him and she admitted this to her aunt. She said that he was the most interesting young man, but unfortunately he had no fortune. Mrs. Gardiner described her to be a sensible girl and she told her that she had to realize that she would disappoint her father by agreeing to marry a penniless guy. She described Wickham as a penniless guy. Penniless, it means that he was very poor. He, he didn't have even a penny. So Elizabeth promised Mrs. Gardiner before she left that she would never think of him again. But would she keep her promise? Let's see. Collins and Charlotte got married. Let's move to London. Jane met Caroline who didn't attempt to continue their friendship. She didn't show that she wanted to keep Jane as a close friend to her. This caused Jane's disappointment and she expressed this to her in, her, in her letter to Elizabeth. Elizabeth was saddened to read of Jane's disappointed, disappointment but felt more cheerful when Jane told her that she would no longer be deceived 
by the sister at least, by Caroline. So now we know that Elizabeth's opinion of Caroline was accurate. And as a punishment for Bingley, Jane wished him to marry Darcy's sister, Georgiana Darcy, who according to Wickham would make him quickly regret what he had thrown away. Because if you remember in the last chapter, Wickham described her as, uh, as arrogant, as her brother. So Jane believed that it, will, it would be a suitable punishment for Bingley to marry Georgiana Darcy. At the same time, Elizabeth also received a letter from Mrs. Gardiner asking her about Wickham. She was able to reply quite honestly that there was no danger of him marrying her anymore because he now transferred all his affection to another lady who was rich. January and February passed and the time came in March where when, the, the, when Elizabeth was about to visit the Collins. Who are the Collins? Mr. Collins and Mrs. Collins. Who's Mrs. Collins now? Charlotte Lucas. So Elizabeth went to visit Charlotte and spent a night with Jane. On her way to London, she spent the night with Jane at the gardener's place. She was delighted to see her sister who seemed healthy. When they spoke privately, she knew that Jane had been suffering of depression. And she tried bravely and she succeeded to be as cheerful as ever. The following day, they moved to Hunsford. They reached the rectory of Rosings and then they went to Mr. Collins and Charlotte's house. They received her affectionately and she saw that marriage had not changed her cousin's manners. He greeted them with formal politeness and long speeches. He took them around the house, around in the house, explaining the, the good points of the house. And Elizabeth could not help thinking that perhaps he was speaking particularly to her. He wanted her to regret refusing him, but actually this didn't happen. Charlotte could look cheerful. She was actually happy. He spoke of gardening and Charlotte joined him in his speech. So Charlotte was really a happy wife now. She was not acting. After only one day, a message came from Lady Catherine inviting them all to dinner at Rosings Park. Mr. Collins was delighted. He was over the moon with this invitation. He congratulated his guests. See to what extent? He congratulated his guests on their good luck because they received such an invitation. So he confessed that he only expected her to invite them to have tea, but not to dinner. And the next morning, all this time was spent in discussing their visit to Rosings. This made Sir William Lucas and Maria, Charlotte's sister, quite nervous when the moment came to walk across the park and enter the great lady's house. Elizabeth was unimpressed by what she had heard of Lady Catherine and she remained calm. She saw Lady Catherine. That was the first meeting between Lady Catherine, Lady Catherine and Elizabeth. As you know, Lady Catherine was the aunt of Mr. Darcy. She was extremely proud and she received her guests with an air of disdain. She spoke loudly and she spoke decidedly on every matter. She was clearly convinced of her superiority over all the rest of the people, not country people only. Her daughter Anne 
was completely different. She was a small girl, she was thin, ill-looking, and she spoke very little and only in whisper, unlike her mother. The dinner was very good and of course it was highly praised by Mr. Collins. He kept on repeating compliments to Lady Catherine all the time. This made Elizabeth thought that it was embarrassing. After dinner, Lady Catherine started speaking continuously and giving her opinion about every matter. Without any fear of being contradicted, she believed that nobody could ever contradict her. And then she asked Elizabeth many detailed and embarrassing questions. She asked her on every single detail of her life. She asked about her education, about her sisters, and even about her father's income. Although Elizabeth considered these questions Personal, she answered them frankly. After the visitors were driven home by Lady Catherine's carriage, Mr. Collins started praising his patron for her elegance, intelligence, and even hospitality. The visit was repeated twice a week. And there was little entertainment in Hunsford. The only thing that Elizabeth enjoyed was the pleasant conversations with Charlotte, reading books and walking along a narrow, a narrow path by Lady Catherine's Park. Two weeks after her arrival in Hunsford, she heard that some visitors were coming to Rosings. Who were these visitors? The two cousins of Lady Catherine, Mr. Darcy and Sir and Colonel Fitzwilliam. Colonel Fitzwilliam was Darcy's cousin and he was the nephew of Lady Catherine. So they were the, those were the two nephews of Lady Catherine. They were going to visit her. Mr. Darcy looked as cold as proud as ever. So Mr. Darcy and Colonel Fitzwilliam arrived at Rosings. After greeting Mrs. Collins, Charlotte, he spoke only a few words to Elizabeth, who asked him if he had by any chance seen Jane in London. He looked confused, but then he answered that he had not had that pleasure. Colonel Fitzwilliam's manners were extremely admired by all the ladies. So this added considerably to the enjoyment of their evenings at Rosings because these evenings were extremely boring. And then he came at once and he sat next to Elizabeth. They talked amusingly together, which aroused Darcy's jealousy. After this, she started, Lady Catherine started speaking about music and she told Elizabeth that she liked music a lot and Elizabeth said that she could not play the piano and she said that it was always her own fault but she could not take the trouble to practice. At this moment, Lady Catherine interrupted them and she embarrassed Elizabeth rudely. She told her that Anne would have been a delightful performer. Who is Anne? Lady Catherine's daughter. And she said that Elizabeth would learn how to play the piano in the servant's room. So she embarrassed Elizabeth a lot. This is the end of chapter 6. Stay safe and meet you soon.